This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. What's it like to see some of the most impoverished areas of the world and try day in and day out to make a difference and wonder why God chooses us to do the work? I'll be reunited today with good friend and former TV co-host Ginger Stocky. She'll share with us about her experience working with Joyce Meyer Ministries the past 16 years. But first, all over the country, sweeping legislation has been passed making abortion illegal if there's a heartbeat present. Aaron Bear works with Citizens for Community Values, which is at the forefront of getting the Ohio heartbeat bill passed. Roe versus Wade has been the law of the land for almost 50 years, which is very hard to imagine. But now one state after another seems to be introducing things called heartbeat bills. Somebody was very, very influential in Latin Ohio, Aaron Baer, glad to have you with us. Hey, thanks for having and me. And you're the, you're the president, of, uh, president of Citizens for Community Values. Yeah. Tell me about that, first of all, what that really is. Uh, so CCV is the state's family policy council. So we're the Christian voice in public policy in the state of Ohio. Uh, we're in a network, though, of sister organizations all over the country. So groups like Focus on the Family, Alliance Defending Freedom. Mm -hmm. And then in most other states, you'll find a group like us that is that Christian voice at the state house and then in local communities. How did you get back to Ohio? Because you spent a time, you spent a season in Arizona, and then you come back to Ohio winters. What called you back? Well, I, I often joke I'm a, I'm a Messianic Jew by faith, and so I always say that, you know, as, as a Jew, I have an obligation to wander the desert for a little bit of time. So I went <laughs> yeah. out to, to Arizona for a bit, but then uh, I'm originally from Youngstown, Warren, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, when the opportunity came uh, to lead this organization, uh, the board reached out and I thought it was just such a great opportunity because as Ohio goes, so goes the nation. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, that's proven over the years, but Ohio has recently passed a heartbeat bill, but this isn't a new phenomenon. I mean, we, we think it's new, it's back in the news again, pro-life, uh, pro-choice, people battling each other. But the, the whole heartbeat bill has been around in Ohio for quite a while. Absolutely. You know, Ohio was the first to introduce this bill uh, back in 2011. A woman named Janet Porter uh, mm -hmm. developed the concept. And uh, what you just saw was uh, an idea that seemed far-fetched at the time that, you know, nobody really wanted yeah. to touch. Uh, but it was because of consistent effort from, from people like Janet, but also uh, my predecessor at CCV and all the different local right to life groups that just wouldn't let this issue go away. And, and uh, just through constant effort, what you saw happening is a national movement sweeping across America. Yeah, and you, you think these laws will hold? Are they there to challenge the system? Are they there to raise the uh, awareness from people? Or are they there to really go through as law? Well, you know, first and foremost, they're there to protect babies mm -hmm. uh, and protect mothers from the harms and lies of the abortion industry. Uh, but we understand in order to do that, we need to get at the heart of Roe. We need to, we need to get the court to revisit Roe v. Wade that they passed in 1973. And so when we're looking at what's the best way of going about that, we really see the heartbeat bill as, as the best way of giving the court the opportunity to revisit that standard um, and also uh, do something that's meaningful to actually protect life. Yeah. You, 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 so this is going to be challenged in Ohio. Yeah. What, what are you doing to prepare for that? You know, really, in Ohio, we're, we're especially blessed because we have a great attorney general in Dave Yost. He's somebody that has you know, years of experience uh, on constitutional law and a number of issues. So we're in great hands uh, in Ohio on this. Uh, and, but all of our prep work, though, went into the legislative process where we brought in attorneys and doctors and just experts mm -hmm. from all over the place to, to lay the case out to say, listen, the Roe v. Wade established the standard for when you can limit abortion is viability, um, which is a moving mm -hmm. standard and is a very subjective standard yeah. on any given day. Uh, the heartbeat bill says, hey, let's move to an objective standard of say, when you detect a heartbeat, that's when that's you can it. no longer perform yeah. abortions. And you say viability, that really has shifted over the years. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you look at uh, interviews on college campuses and a lot of students have no idea what's going on in the womb of a woman who's pregnant. They, right. have, they don't realize that that, that, and I can't get my head around the fact that they don't realize it's a baby. Mm -hmm. But you got a, a law now in Alabama that's even more stringent than mm -hmm. what we're talking about with the heartbeat bill. Yeah. So the, the Alabama bill is a life at conception bill, which again is, that's really what uh, your pro-life ethic sure. would say is that, uh, you know, life at the moment of conception, everything you need to have life is mm -hmm. there. And so we should protect and honor life at that moment. Uh, what we saw with Heartbeat, the reason why we went with Heartbeat in Ohio and why a number of states mm -hmm. did is that we're looking at Roe v. Wade and saying, what's the, what's the best way we can get this, the, the Supreme Court to revisit this decision and ultimately send the decision, send the abortion issue back to the state we thought heartbeat was the best strategy there. Somehow define personhood. Exactly. Do they have constitutional rights? Mm -hmm. So why, why the term heartbeat? I mean, just because it, it, it gets you 
this is something that's going to happen. We yeah. know we know we can define it now. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the things that I love about the heartbeat bill is that it really does, it refocuses the abortion debate. So much of the abortion debate gets bo bogged down in, in a lot of rhetoric and the my body, my choice and those types yeah. of things. But the ultimate question we have to wrestle with when we're talking about abortion is, is that a human life? Mm -hmm. does, is that a human life deserving of protections? And if so, then that should take precedent. We shouldn't be able to kill that child. And that's what heartbeat, just the message of it, it says, hey, this this thing in the mm -hmm. womb has a heartbeat. Yeah. So what else could it be if not a human life? Yeah. What about uh, laws like we, we see in New York State now? Mm -hmm. Has that you think that's going to backfire in a, in a case where they say abortion right up until the day of delivery? Is that not murder? Absolutely. You know, I, I really think what you're seeing and. and it, it, the, the prophetic voice of the Christians and culture for years, and you're, you're really seeing these things play out on a number of issues. Uh, we've been talking about sort of the radical position of Planned Parenthood and a lot of abortion advocates on abortion thinking that they should allow for abortion up to the point of birth or even after, as we're seeing in some cases. Uh, and for years they've said, oh, no, 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 we don't believe that. We, you know, no partial birth abortion, no late-term mm -hmm. abortion, that's where we stand. But really what we're seeing now is that states like New York and Illinois and, are, and California are revealing themselves yeah. to have a really radical position that's outside of the mainstream, even for non-believers uh, on this issue. Well, you think that's going to backfire on it? 100%. You think it gives you more... Gives you more Ammunition? Oh, oh, absolutely. Especially when we, when we get into the electoral conversation, what you see happening with, especially on the coast right now, is they're taking such a radical mm -hmm. position to the left. Um, we, we can go back and revisit the 2016 election with Donald Trump and see there are a lot of folks that were a little bit hesitant on voting for Donald Trump. Um, but if all that's being offered on the other side right now is a radical pro-abortion position that says you, ha you have to believe in abortion up to the point of birth or you're, you're a bigot or you're a terrible mm -hmm. person or we're going to boycott you're, you. You're a hater. Yeah. You're a hater or you something like women. that. Yes. Exactly. You hate women. Um, that t type of hard line radical left position, that's certainly going to backfire in the election and also you'll start seeing in public policy as well. Now, I'm sure you saw the interview. What well, wasn't an interview? It was, I guess, a, a, a videotape of the uh, the councilman in Alabama, mm. and and what he said about uh, it's a woman's right, it's her body, yada yada, all the, the whole the whole rhetoric. And then he says, "We either kill him now, or we kill him later." Does that? It, it, is America just? Are we dumb? Are we stupid? <laughs> are we uh, lulled into sleep? I mean, he exposes the whole. Well, exactly. And and what's what's so sad about that is. Uh, the, the idea that a child that's born into a difficult circumstance is, is a useless case is what they're arguing. And that's what he's saying. They're saying that a child's better off dead than born into poverty, than born uh, into tough circumstances, which, which fundamentally is the most un-American thing you can say because the American promise when we talk about what makes America great is the idea that you can come from nowhere and rise up and do amazing things. We see that time and sure. time again. Uh, and, and what you see the left saying now is, no, you know what, if you're, if you're going to be born into a tough situation, a tough circumstance, you're better off if you were never born at all. And that's exactly what he said. Yeah. Uh, as, as this goes ahead now, and we see more and more uh, things going into courts, they're, they're going to be challenged, the heartbeat bills. Discouraged, encouraged, what, what can we do as, as just general citizens? You know, I'm so encouraged right now, and, and we always say the first thing we can do is pray. Uh, and that is the most powerful thing we can do. That's the most important thing we can do. Uh, you know, I think the other thing that we really want to see right now is on the left, people are getting fired up. If you saw that video in New York when they passed that abortion yeah, up to the cheered. birth, it was cheering. Yes. Um, and now is the time for, for energy and passion in the pro-life community, in the Christian community, uh, to be at an all-time high because we are right on the brink of victory on the life issue and on a number of issues as well. A quick update since we talked to Aaron. A federal judge, as expected, has temporarily blocked Ohio's ban on abortion after a heartbeat is detected. Now, we encourage you to contact your state representatives and let them know that you believe that life is a gift from God and should be protected by our laws. Our culture is moving away from a biblically-based lifestyle faster than ever in history. Even many believers struggle to explain their own viewpoint on who Jesus really is. God says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. That's why TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Lacey, a program that discusses biblical issues and how they relate to our culture today. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, so no topics are off limits. But we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. Maybe you've never supported a Christian media ministry before, but in today's world, our message is needed more than ever, and it only takes a minute to give. 
Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. Been looking forward to this interview for a lot of, lot, a lot of months because we've got back in the studio Jennifer Stocky, but you're no longer Jennifer. What happened? <laughs> Hi, Bob. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Glad to have you here. And all my friends there. Yeah. yeah. You know, the funny thing is, nothing changed. My name was always Ginger. Yep. My parents, my family, my friends have always called me Ginger. But when I was at TV 44, I we, went by Jennifer on TV because I was asked to. Because so Ron I Meyer asked me to. Constant state of confusion. Yes. <laughs> So now I just go by Ginger yes. and things are better. <laughs> but you've been gone now. You've been with Joyce Meyer for how long? 16 years. Wow, 16 yeah. years. Yeah, it's you went been out a while. Yeah, you went out there. A lot of people were just assuming, where well, you're going out to produce your TV show. But you've gotten into so much more since you've been there. Tell us a little bit about how it spread out from the, the time you got there as a producer. Yeah, well, I did come to um, be the senior producer with the program, and it was really growing and expanding at the time. And they have just a wonderful group of people here. Because the hardest thing about leaving mm -hmm. TV44 was leaving all of you wonderful people and all my friends there. That was really difficult. So it's great to be here and have family here as well. So now I have family both places. <laughs> but it, it has expanded from that role into more of leading all of the media areas, so television, online, um, print books, um, marketing, all of those media areas that I get to be part of and lead the team. And what that's taking you to is, is really around the world. I know when you were here, you had a passion for, for ministry, or for missions, and even went yeah. on some short-term missions. But what I see you now, when I see you on Facebook, I mean, you are all over the world. Well, it's, it's really one of the desires that God put in my heart from the time I was little. I mean, my parents took me on my first mission trip when I was in elementary school. And so that's always been a big part of just the passion that I had in my life. And so coming here, I didn't realize at first until I started doing some research how much Joyce Meyer Ministries does of outreach around the world. And at the time, 16 years ago, They've been talking, or they've been doing it for years, but not talking about it a lot. So we began to be able to tell the stories of what is happening through our outreach arm, which is called Hand of Hope. So I got to be part of doing all that, and it's been the, one of the greatest blessings of my life. Well, to separate yourself from the, the TV and the media and, and all of those things and, and go into a country where you're looking at real need. I mean, we think we've got need in the United States, but you're, you're really in the yeah. mission field. Was it a shock to you? You know, it was a shock to me to see the breadth of it. I'd been in a lot of individual places, but after a while, mm -hmm. um, I think you can't help but be human and things start to pile on a little bit. Yeah. When you see a starving child and you see a mother whose eyes are just empty because there's nothing they can do to help that child, when you see a woman who's been told all of her life that she has no value because she's a woman. Um, you see an earthquake that devastates an area. You know, each one of those things are really hurtful, but after a while, it really Quite starts to add up. Exactly, and you, at least I do, because one of my tendencies in my personality, unfortunately, is to ask God a whole lot of questions. And I started to be like, you know, God, where are you in these situations? What's going on? Does it look and as though it, he doesn't even see it? It hurt. It was really hard. Yeah, it makes you wonder. You know that he sees it. You have faith. That's why you keep doing the things that you do, and you're able to make a difference. But you know that if God, if, if he snapped his fingers, everything would change. But you go back to what God's word says about the fact that he gave us all free will. There's sin in the world, and that was not his choice. But I, I still had a lot of um, going back and forth and dealing with it with God and saying, what do you want me to do with this burden? Yeah. You know, what, what do you want me to do not to be angry with you mm -hmm. or the world or the person over here who started this war and has caused all these issues? And 
Um, it, it took me a little while to come to terms, and it's one of those big questions that people ask is, where's God and why do good people suffer? And, and when you do see somebody like that, you say you see a starving child, and all of a sudden you develop a relationship with that child or that mother. You hold the child or something, and you come home, and then yeah. you've got to go back again. You say, I don't want to do that again. Do you, have you ever, you ever said that I, I can't handle another one of those? I think we've all said it's too hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's too hard. But the smile that you get, the, the hug from that mom when you are able to feed their child, the um, warmth that you get knowing that you not only fed them a meal, but that you shared Christ with them, which is going to change their life forever. So basically, there's no stopping us at this point. You, you just, I think you have more of a drive to go back and back and back, even though it still hurts every time. It never stops hurting, but the, the joy is bigger than the hurt. So the, the joy is coming from the su success then that you see. I mean, you, you've, right, seen, exactly. you've seen changes, you've seen success. Uh, you think, yeah. how, do we compound, how, do we, how do we make that, spread that out even further? Yeah, because I think about a lot of people who are seeing horrible situations all over the world but aren't seeing the result of doing something mm -hmm. about it. And if it was just that one-sided thing, it, there would be so much anger and there would be so much hopelessness. And, and I think instead, those glimpses of this one person that I could help, it's not fixing the problem, it's helping that one person that God puts in front of you at that moment is what makes it so that you have such a, not an accomplishment in yourself, but such a bigger vision of what God wants to do through every one of us. Is, is there still a place for the, the work and witness team, for the, the, the church to send out 15 people for two weeks? Or do they, they get in, in the way of the big work, or are they really serving a purpose? So my philosophy on that <laughs> is that everybody needs to see what's really happening in the world. And everybody, if they have the opportunity, if they feel like God wants them to, will benefit from helping somebody else. Now, it doesn't mean that there are people who do it better than I do it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There are people who know that culture and um, have the infrastructure and do wonderful things. But if all of us are hands off letting everybody else do that stuff, then they don't have the support that they need either. So I, we have to, you know, the song line, let, let our hearts be broken by what breaks God's. And I think getting out there and seeing it and doing it might spark something that God wants to do in our life somewhere else, or it might just give us compassion for people in our own towns. And because where's the mission field? You know, it's everywhere. It's your own backyard too. And you got to be doing that as well. You, I mean, the United States has always sent thousands of missionaries. The, U, the UK used to send thousands of missionaries. They don't anymore. Is yeah. there a growth in the indigenous missionaries now? You see, you, you see these, these countries growing up their own missions as a result of the missions that the United States or somebody else has sent in the past? It's always a goal. You want people to catch on to that fire and then spread it to everybody else around them. And nobody knows their needs better than they do. Nobody knows how to reach their culture better than they do. But there is still always a place for us if God sends us somewhere. So, sure. you know, I don't understand how God works, <laughs> but I do know that if he says, I want you over here, mm. that he's got something really important for me to do there. And, and the same for those people who are in their own area dealing with really hard things. If, if they can begin to see that answer and spreading it to other people that, that are their family and friends, you know, that's absolutely the best way to do it. So I just love it when God could do it all himself, but he lets us be part of it because he knows how much it means in our lives too. It's so much as much for me as it is for anybody else that I ever come in contact with. Well, with Joyce's ministry, I mean, with, with hand, it's Hand of Hope, right? Hand of Hope, yes. You can't do it alone either. I mean, how, how do you guys interact with other mission fields? How do you interact uh, when you get into a country that's maybe new to you? Yeah. So. Joyce Meyer Ministries, from the very, very beginning, always knew that they couldn't just talk about the gospel or, or even just share the word without demonstrating it firsthand. Mm -hmm. So that's always been a huge part of what they've done is to be serving other people and, 
and tilling that ground, getting hearts soft also so that we can share Christ in a way that really makes a difference. So they've been doing that all over the world in different ways, and we've really learned that what we do best is equip one another. So what we normally do, we do have some outreaches that we just started in this place because there was a need and God opened a door and we went and did it. But there are also a lot of people that do great things but just don't have the support or the facilities or the, the prayer support or the finances to make it happen. But we can pull people all around them and give them what they need. So we have seen a lot of countries where we've been able to come along beside someone else who really knew what they were doing right. and we could give them what they needed to be able to do it. So is there big growth coming or is, is it as far as it can go right now? Uh, you know, there's so much to do around the world. I don't think any of us are as, as far as we can go. And we do see new opportunities in different places. Things change over the years and so forth. We're seeing more and more opportunities um, Unfortunately, in helping refugees right. and, and reaching out to families who've been torn from their homelands. And, um, but it is an opportunity to show them the love of Christ. And so I, I think when there is a door open, when there are hurting people, we want to be able to go in there. When there's a natural disaster, you know, here in the United States, we want to be able to go in there with health and fresh water and whatever it is that we need to do. So Opportunities never end. Right. Where, where are the big hot spots right now? I mean, we look at the refugees flowing out of the Middle East, out of Syria in particular, and other places. Where, where are some of those places? Yeah. Well, we've worked a lot. Um, like I said, we tend to work alongside other people who are already doing this work. So um, in Lebanon, Lebanon has one of the largest per capita mm -hmm. um, populations of refugees. Um, in the whole world and they are coming from Syria and Iraq and they are people who literally were torn out of their homes with their families overnight and have lost loved ones and left behind everything they had in their careers and in talking with them it's just so hard to even imagine mm -hmm. what that would be like for us mm -hmm. to all of a sudden have everything taken away like that so that that's a place where we've been very grateful and able to help and then throughout Europe um, in Greece, France, Germany, a lot of those countries that are seeing a lot of refugees. If, if I could tell a story, sure. we were in a refugee camp in Greece and there was a really sweet Iraqi refugee family. And you know, we're, we're very different. Our, our cultures are different, our faiths are different. But what we find in this, when they've lost everything, is when you're just showing love, then there's that bond, there's that mm -hmm. connection. And so we were working with them and they, they asked me if I would share dinner with them. And you know, I was, I was so honored that they would ask me because I know they don't, they don't have hardly anything. So I went into their tent and they had this little can of some sort of, of meat product. I don't know what it Spam. was <laughs> and something like that. Yeah. And it was mostly gone. And there was a, one communal plastic fork and they passed it around. And that was the meal. Oh and we all took one, one bite from that. And, you know, the, the carnal me would be, oh, I don't know if yeah. I want to do that. But the, the spiritual side was just overwhelmed with gratitude that they gave me a little bit of the very last of what they had. Mm -hmm. And it, it just shows how you can form a bond with people at a time when they are in such need by extending the love of Christ. Yeah. And I'll you, never forget it. <laughs> I, I can see why. And, and you guys are in those places where the, the need is very, very great and, it, and it's obvious in some of those cases. What about in some of the countries that, you've, that, that you see in Europe where there's not, a great, there's not a great financial need, there's not a great need, except they have no idea who Christ is. I mean, we were in yeah. England for a while and we began to see that there were no churches left anymore, very, very few of them. They become antique yeah. shops. I, anything yeah. in, the, in, the, in the ministry in that direction to people who are basically well off, but they're they're going to go to hell without Christ. Yeah, that is one of those places where we find it's hugely important to work alongside the people who are there mm -hmm. and really understand what it is that people are thinking and why they've pulled away from the tradition of the church and how to help them get a real relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. So whether it's uh, when we go in and uh, when we've done a conference in a place like Birmingham, England or something like that, 
we do see people coming because they're still hungry. You know, they still want something. And yet in many, many of those countries, there's just a, a real disconnect between uh, a hole in your life and a spiritual answer. So one of the places that we're seeing wonderful results is in Germany. Um, the getting the word into Germany and, and Joyce is really well received there and the teaching is making a big difference wow. in people's lives. So, you know, it's hard ground, but you don't give up. You, you just keep doing it. Well, you got a real call on, on, on our lives and the, and the viewers' lives, I'm sure. How, how should people get involved? I mean, if they've maybe never been on a work or witness trip, uh, they've, never been, they've never given to ministries or given to missions, what's, what's the first step for them to get involved with somebody like Hand of Hope? Yeah. Well, the, the easiest thing to, to start, because no one should say, donate, you know, that that's mm -hmm. never your first step. Maybe that's where God will take you and you'll be able to help in, in that way. But the very first step is if you know that you have a relationship with Christ or if you have something that you want to give to other people is begin to ask God, how do you want me to do this? And he will very, very definitely start laying things on your heart. And it may be through your own church. It may be an outreach in your own city. It may be something in your own neighborhood. Um, and then it might grow from there. So I love it when people start their own little outreaches and ministries and such important things in their own part of the world first. And from there, it may be, okay, now I want you to go to this other country or I, I want you to start giving financially and help making this possible. Or, you know, I want you to go move there for the rest of your <laughs> life if you want to go to yeah. the big extent. No one likes to think that first, but... I'll tell you, when, when you start at any little bit that you'll give God, then he'll start meeting it by giving you just such joy and so many things that you didn't know that you could get from helping somebody else. Would so you, start somewhere. I think that's someplace. the key. Start somewhere. Oh, Ginger, thank you for being with us. I want to get you back to talk about a very, very specific uh, arm of your ministry that really deals with the tragedy we see around the world and how women are treated and how they grow up in some countries that uh, don't value their lives at all. So we want to get you back again. Thank you so much again. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. Would you like to help expand the reach of Viewpoint with Bob Placey? Then sign in with your YouTube account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now would do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places that missionaries can't even reach. Thank you for helping us reach the world by sharing Viewpoint with Bob Placey. This is where on other programs you'd be watching a commercial, but not on Viewpoint. If you've never supported TV44 before and enjoy Bob's interviews on Viewpoint, we encourage you to please support us today. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate. I appreciate you joining me today. Please share our interviews on YouTube. Also, you can find Viewpoint interviews on iTunes and anywhere you listen to a podcast. I'm Bob Placey. Thanks for joining me today. Remember, you can share all the Viewpoint interviews you've seen today online at YouTube. And you can listen to the Viewpoint podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere you can listen to a podcast.